Hi everybody, it's Toby. Uh, welcome back to the Rock Paper Classic. Today, part number 12, and we are talking about actually dynamic boundaries um, while using the coded uh, fixed value boundary condition. Everybody who is interested in um, making boundaries on the fly for your personal need is welcome to uh, check out this video. Of course, we have different options, um, but the, this one is interesting. So, um, what I'm going to give you today is we are doing something like this here. So we make, a, yeah, first we make um, a boundary conditions that uh, makes uh, all the vect all the, the vectors from the outlet normal, um, and we apply a constant uh, value here. And I will give you like you know the the, the hints about making it more dynamic with with the time. Um, so uh, not to waste your time because you know and I know time is money and it's uh, yeah you see that I have I have no time for even shaving my face but uh, that is not a big deal because I'm not out anymore so um ah uh, good uh, what we did is actually we made the steady state we made the transient case so what we are doing is we just copy. Let's copy the transient case and making a coded fixed value. So we just copy paste all the case into another case called co coded, coded fixed value. So um, for you as a hint, um, what we did wrong actually in terms of physical correctness is that if we have our smoking pipe, yes, we have actually um, had here at the, had an inlet so we force the flow with a fixed value going in however this does not make sense at all because we are just you know sucking here taking one shot and then it's done so what we want to do with the dynamic boundary first is okay we want to apply that um the the flow is going out here and the flow should go out normal to the faces because what you could say here is actually you say a fixed value to to the set direction a minus set direction but then then the flow would not go from from the face like normal but it would go uh, inclined so this does not make sense so of course you can now calculate the, the angle and you can say we have an and Z component and we have an y component and then you can use a fixed value of course there's also a, a fixed normal surface normal velocity inlet outlet um for these purposes but this is like you know you give like a mean value and that's fine uh, or a value which is normal directed and what we are going to do is we say we want to have like a dynamic condition here so we are starting with small velocities we increase it and we we uh, do it then we going back to zero and then we increase it again or something like this they are also like you know the the um the uniform fixed value where you can use the function one um option but uh, the problem here is additionally that it's not normal um even though with function one i think you can also make your own coded which is actually then leading back to the coded fixed value doesn't matter by the way coded fixed value and coded mixed value is something different because the coded fixed value can handle directly boundary conditions or you can make because it's fixed right so there is nothing else you can do with the coded mixed you can use directly boundary condition you can make a zero gradient boundary condition and you can make a linear slope in between so something between directly and um, a gradient condition which is uh, called also robinson condition so okay that was that for the beginning four minutes sorry so we we start we start what we want to do is um, we want just to change the velocity field and we want to make the outlet because the outlet is where the flow goes into our mouth. Um, we want to have your coded fixed value. 
So and hence we make the inlet a zero gradient. So we don't care that uh, what happens at the inlet. So the inlet is like defined based on the flow from the cell that owns the face. And yes, by the way, the physics now are, is something different. Before we were pushing air through the pipe. Now we are sucking air from the outlet through the pipe. So the, the physics uh, are different. Okay, so now we, we just wrote here a coded fixed value. So you can ask me, what the heck, Toby, why why you know that there is coded fixed value? Well, I am using open form for a long time now. And the next question is, how do we need to, or, or how we set up this boundary condition? I want to show it to you. So the first thing you 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 know, have to know is uh, the banana trick. So if you are not aware how or which boundary condition you can use, you can use the banana trick. It, it's called banana. You just write here something which is not valid. For example, if you say fixed coded fixed value and the ODED fixed value is not valid. So if you are running, I'm not sure. Did we run pimple foam, uh, piece of foam? On def um, piso pimple pimple foam, we run pimple foam, right? So um, now, as the the algorithm is checking first the boundary condition and say, oh, the the ODET the ODET uh, ODET fixed value is not valid, so it lists like all the boundary conditions we can use, and right now we have eighty two fucking boundary conditions we could use. And here is the coded fixed value. We can also use um, something else here. And you see here we have a, a fixed normal slip pair. We have a fixed uh, normal inlet outlet velocity. So everything what, what we want to have. So I'll just go through that. Um, this is called the banana trick, by the way. So we go back. So now the coded, it's coded fixed value. So how to set up this coded fixed value? Now you can say, Okay, I want to run uh, the, the guy um, and now it's complaining. Okay, keyword name is missing. Okay, then we add here the keyword name and the name is something how your boundary condition is, is named. So um, yeah, whatever name you want to, to take. Um, you can also say my outlet. Let's say, let's see if this works now. It is working. Now we will see if it's really working. So it works. So what it is actually doing at the beginning, this, these coded fixed and coded mixed boundary conditions, they will call the compiler and then you compile your own boundary condition. And this boundary condition is, uh, is here. Um, you get a new yeah, folder called dynamic code. And within, this dynamic code, you you have the, the the header file, the source file, so it is automatically added for you, and then it is creating the libraries. And here here actually is the library, which takes the name my outlet and then some arbitrary um, yes hash. And this is the library. And within this library, there is your boundary condition, which OpenFOAM uses them. Okay, that, that's just for the guys who are doing programming. You can now copy this guy into another case, and then you can use your, this library, okay? If you are using PimpleFOAM again, so you call the application again, it will not recompile it because you don't change the boundary. So everything is up to date and it directly takes out this uh, library. Okay. So, however, nothing will happen because um, we didn't specify anything here. So the, the main interesting thing is missing. And if you are not aware of a boundary condition, how to apply that, you'd simply, you simply go to um, source, which is the same than foam source. Then you go to finite volume fields, FV patch fields derived. And then if you check out these guys, 
you have here all the boundary conditions which are derived there it's not um uh, all boundary conditions open form but a lot of you will find here and we will find here the coded the coded fixed value so we go to the coded fixed value um, for other guys who are using this um, then you open the coded fixed value add a file and then you can check out I will I will just do it here that you have for the fixed value age that uh, it's getting a bit larger so on these header files of all boundary conditions there is an example how you have to specify and set up the boundary condition so as you can see we have this is already done coded fixed value we have uniform we have a name and now this is the interesting thing right this code attribute or sub dictionary and the code include and the code option so if you write any code here inside which needs to have like another header file because you you need um, different let's say classes that are not included in the main solver you have to include it here and the same is valid for libraries right so however what we are doing now um, we don't have to consider these two this is just for you as a hint if there is something um, from from the solver how oh, this uh, class is not defined or whatever then you should just include your header file or library so okay we are here um 11 minutes okay we have to go a bit on i don't want to waste your time too much so what we have actually is um within this code you can now really code you can use open foam specific classes you can use pointers you can all you can use all the classes all the objects um you can make new objects you can do whatever you want you can do so many things there and that's why i love this uh, coded fixed value because there are some situations where it is not possible um out of the box by using the standard boundary conditions and sometimes even groovy Sorry, Bernhard, I, I don't think that you will watch this, but um, uh, sometimes it's not even possible with Groovy to do what you want. For example, in my PhD, I, I was looking up a uh, Scalar input IO list, and I was also in contact with Bernhard, and it was not possible. But here you can do whatever you want. You can, you could, yeah, uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want. However, it requires programming. So, what is very important to know this guy the operator this guy will set actually um, your condition to the faces so what you can do now is we make first a vector right this is a class we create a new object my vector or u outlet whatever you want to name it and we specify this with zero 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 point let's, let's make it one so the velocity is zero in x y zero in y and one meter per second in z direction so this is a new vector and you can directly so you can directly say that u outlet then this single vector is applied to all single faces so the operator knows okay i get a single value a single vector but i have to use this single vector and apply it on all faces okay so if we run pimple foam but before we do that we make here a banana a banana test too um in order to see uh, end time no right right now next right we will use next right next right and we start pimple foam so now the pimple foam application knows okay the boundary changes so we have to recompile the crap and we run now the simulation um i wanted to use um right now um so what is right now means make one time step and then write the solution 
and stop your simulation. So as you can see, this is very helpful if you want to debug something. So now we are checking out what happens at the outlet. So you see here the velocity and let's do it. We change these guys. All right. So we make the, the glyphs. I'm sorry that the uh, power view is small compared to other things. My monitor is just too big. So we have. Where are the vectors? Let's let's make it 10 times larger. So what what we have is actually we apply this um, velocity of direction of one to the set one meter per second to the set direction onto all of these faces. Okay, nothing special. You can use fixed value for that. I just wanted to show you how this happens or what we are doing here. Now, what we want to do is we want to apply a mean value, um, let's say one meter per second normal to the faces. Um, Hence, we go back to the velocity field. And now we have the problem. Okay, we, we specified here some, let's say, um, yeah, some vector, but we want to have um, we want to have like an outlet velocity of I don't know, let's make it one, one meter per second. But this one meter per second should be a uh, normal to the face, right? And not uh, within a special direction what we had before. So therefore we need to have access to the normal vectors so that we get the normal vectors, the direction in order to, to, to create the correct values. So for this, we first need to know how things work. Okay. So for any reason, the, the, now we are going into the programming, the normal vectors of a patch is a list of vectors, right? So it's a vector field. Um, if you are more familiar with OpenFOAM, you, you will know what, what I'm talking about. So these normal vectors, it's a list of vectors. So it's also a vector list. It should also work with list vector. Um, we can check this. However, then we say um, the object name is N and this guy is something. So now the question is, how can we access the normals, the surface normals? And we can access this normal vectors by calling the function which will return the normal vector. So now the question is which function I have to call. And now it's going to object programming, object oriented programming. So now you have to know what is, what is the, the word this. This is actually the object we are working in. So we have the coded fixed value. This is a class, right? Um, and we, we made an object of this class, coded fixed value, and this is this object. So that means knowing what is a coded fixed value, what, of, what is that, so the coded fixed value, which class is it? Then you know that this is the object of this class. And in order to, to get this, it's, um, for beginners, it's hard. For people who are not aware with um, programming, it's even harder to understand this. Uh, I hope I can guide you here through. I have also videos regarding um, programming, um, which I will explain a bit more about these things. So, okay. So, we are going to the doxygen, which is very important if you are programming and we type in coded fixed value. So then we take the first one as this is like, um, yes, the, the guy we are searching and we are searching this one of this, this coded fixed value FV patch type. 
Um, yes, why is it like this? Because it is like this. It's a C++ in programming. So what we know is like um, we have this coded fixed value FV patch field, which is which inherits this fixed value FV patch, right? And now you see that when you have this, so this guy, this guy, right? This guy can call all these functions here. It can call this function and this function and this function, which is not too much, but as it inherits the fixed value FV patch field, if you click on that here, if you click on that, you will see that you can also use all functions of this class, right? And this class inherits the FV patch field. And if you click on that, you can also use all these functions here. So if you make this database DB, it will call this function. And why it knows that it has to call the fu this function from the FV patch field because it is not implemented in the coded fixed value FV patch field. It doesn't exist there. It doesn't exist in the, what was in the fixed value FV patch field. There, if you just check it out here, it's not there. And then it is implemented here. So, and then you will get access to an object registry. All right. So now you can check out Okay, we can now return the patch normal gradients, for example, if you're interested in that. Um, however, um, we, we have to, to call the patch, which will return an FV patch. And within this FV patch, we can call the function NF, which returns the face normals. So the function we are looking for is NF, right? So, however, NF is not, is not included in this FV patch field. So you will not find any FF, uh, NF function here. However, it is included in the FV patch um, class. So what we first have to do, we have to do constant FV patch, patch is this, and then patch. So what we do? This object, which is based on this, is calling the patch, right? And the, it is calling this function. And this function will return a constant FV patch and then an upper set. So that's why I have here constant FV patch upper set. This will return a reference to the class FV patch. So now we have, with with, with patch here. So this guy, this patch is now, as it is written here, patch is an object of class FV patch. And as this is an object of FV patch, we can call functions from the FV patch now, and we can call the NF. And as you can see, it's a vector field which will be returned. So you can simply make, after we, you have this, you can say constant vector, we have it already, vector field patch and then NF. So the difference between this operator and the point operator is that this guy is a pointer and this one is a reference. This is uh, something related to C++. Okay, so and stores all surface normal vectors of the patch outlet. That's it. I hope this was 
clear we have 24 minutes already but this is um it's more more now into programming i wanted to avoid that but i think maybe people are interested in how these guys uh, how these things are working so however as it is uh, here you know it is actually the same you see uh, above it is actually the same you can't do um, what you can do to make it to speed it up um, speed up you can also make vector field n and two doesn't matter you can also make it like this patch nf i'm not sure if this works or something like this or something like like this so this this within these brackets will return the, the FV patch and on this you apply an F. So you can do whatever you, you want to do. You can, you can, it's like, you know, two, one plus one. It is uh, A is one plus one, B is A plus two. It's something like this. You can also write B is one plus one plus two. So it's uh, the same, right? okay and now we have um we want to to tell okay please apply this velocity of one meter per second to all phases so now the problem is that yeah how how to do that and now we have to make a scalar field um which has the the so the scalar field the size is the size of the faces we have and we specify for each face now the the vector we want to use um or the the, the not the, the vector the the mean value for example and in order to do that we specify first this uh, size so it is like this will return and size will return the number of faces of this boundary and then we can say u outlet and we initialize so now in this scalar field it has maybe 400 entries and each of these 400 entries will have the value one um, now it will have the value two and now we say okay please check out here we have u multiplied by nf right uh, not by nf by n that's that's everything so what we what we do is we uh, start the guy again we let it run and after the first time step it should stop we will check it out what happens we check out the outlet we take the glyphs which are here and we just apply that and now you see all the vectors are normal to the faces and of course as some faces are somehow crappified like here they are inclined or these guys here um yes you will have different vectors and that that's it so this was the first introduction to the coded fixed value i think we stop now as we have uh, 28 minutes already um time dependency as i mentioned i want to add this stuff here too actual time so we want to know um, when we are running the simulation which time we do have so the runtime of our analysis so we have this is a scalar right the time is a scalar we name it t or you can make uh, name it time and how we can access to the time now so we start again with this this is again a coded fixed value fv patch field object and so nothing nothing is working here so we 
there is no time, right? So we go into the fixed value FV patch. You will find nothing regarding time here. By the way, you can also directly see here public member functions from the inherited FV patch field, public member functions from the field, which is actually, if you click on that, you go one, one class deeper and deeper. And you see it's here, doesn't matter. So um, here, if you, if you check out this, uh, there you will not find any time here too. And if you check out others, um, you will not find um, any time nothing i'm sorry there is no time but we have this guy the database and this will return the local object registry and all all fields that are registered so in the open foam database can be um checked out so this object registry um if you click on this object registry you can check out so Ah, here, if we have this object registry, um, we can call the function time, which will return an object of the time. And probably if you go deeper and deeper and deeper, I probably think it's in the time state and it's a dimension scalar the time, then you will have here someone the value, which will return the value. But this is something right so we can directly say okay this so the coded fixed fv patch field can call this function database which will return a time object here we have it here database will return um we can apply this time right so we can then say okay we call the function time and from this we call the function value and now we have the time <laughs> right it's very simple if you want to get into into these guys with stocks and chain and it's important i i believe and um, if we are interested if you are interested in programming in open foam and you want to do more fancy thing it's very handsome to 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 get familiar with uh, doxy chain otherwise you are lost even i would be lost if something like this would not be yeah if something like this would not exist okay and now oh, having this time so okay i'm going on and going on but i want to to to, to close this, this thing if you now have the time you can simply make if else uh, things or you can use functions like sinus or coziness um so what you can do is um you can say okay we want to make a scalar outlet and if time is smaller than one second you say you outlet is 0 0.1 meter seconds else you outlet is zero and now you have a time dependent boundary condition because um yes if the time is smaller than one you apply here onto this scalar field you initialize it with 0 0.1 otherwise you initialize it with with zero and then um of course the, the vectors gets different and um, by the way you also can directly make a vector field u here which does have also the size so the amount of faces and you say u outlets multiplied by n and you say okay you push this vector field to the operator so this should work i'm not part of you i'm sorry pimple foam and it is not working why it is not working i don't know right now so therefore you should check out what is the problem error in matching function field vector double blah 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 
Um, I think I know what's going on. We have three arguments provided to one argument, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't matter what, what's written here. So the easier thing is to make here a scalar field. It's not an easier thing um, with this guy and then simply say it like this. Um, otherwise you have to check out in Doxygen how to initialize a vector field. So um, I didn't do it uh, the last few months. That's why out of the box, I just check it, had to check it out within two, three seconds. Uh, more, uh, but however, I don't want to waste your time now. Okay, so the next time we will uh, get into the, we will make the, the final boundary conditions for this. Um, and that was the, the introduction part for coded fixed value that you get more familiar with. With this boundary condition, we already made a time-dependent boundary condition. I didn't show it to you, but now if you run the case, you will get, you know, um, from zero to one seconds, you will have, um, yes, uh, 0 0.1 meter per second. And after that, you will have zero meter per second. Okay, so that was everything for today. I hope uh, it was not too boring for you guys and um, take care. Bye bye, and I will just s. I will just give you, give you. For those who are really uh, focused, um, I will just give you an idea what I'm doing right now. Um, of course, I am programming on this open foam analyzer, which is getting more crazy. But I'm also working on a, a new case, um, and. If you are watching now 36 minutes, I think you will also be interested in in this this guy here, which is actually uh, um, it, it is just a test case, you know. Um, Toby gets crazy again. I have I created a, a a rifle silencer here, so this is like pipe where the bullet is located in and i have here a source term an energy source term a mass source term and then we have you know um we initialize it uh, we have an explosion um someone is shooting out uh, the bullet and we get pressure up to what is it 82 bars at the beginning we have i think more than um 3000 bars so everything's possible with open foam so 1.6 to the powers of, of 8 so it's yeah 1600 bars and how, how far is it now um, i want to use overset mesh for this and i already created the overset mesh um yes and you see here <laughs> i like it I like it very much. Um, like the pressure, um, shock waves um, going through. I have to check out once that I don't have to change these guys always. So very, very interesting. Um, velocity of 1900 meter per seconds. Um, very nice, nice guy. <laughs> you can look forward for some nice videos, probably. Um, however, uh, this is, <laughs> you know, um, I'm always interested in, in, in new things. Um, yes, thank you for watching. Hope it was interesting. Um, maybe we, we should talk about some setup of, of these skies too. And if overset mesh is working, I will shoot the bullet out there and yes. Bye guys, um, take care, keep foaming and still watching my videos, bye.